really beautiful. I've come out here to find a memorial, a Native American memorial monument that a local told me about last night in my camp who drove by. Hey friendlies, it's Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. Today's video is another one that got away from me. I thought I was gonna do a nice little video about a Native American memorial and monument that I visited and it turned into something a little bit bigger. <laughs> and uh, kind of like the Selma video that I did. It's not quite as intense as the Selma video, but I had a lot of fun putting this together and really just letting my creativity flow. And I'm having so much fun bringing you all more than just travel videos. But I know a lot of my core audience are thinkers, are are people who care about society and life and growth and 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 experiencing things and I know you think about things and I keep that in mind as I'm doing my videos and it's also stuff that I care about history and how it, how it ties into today and what we are as a society past present and future and that's really what I have been what I ended up doing with today's video and uh, it's wow you know the side of me this creative side that's coming out of me is uh, really just a lot of fun so I hope you like it I had a lot of fun putting it together. Be sure to stay tuned to the very end. I have some pretty interesting facts, past and present, in at the end of the video. And uh, just, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it. <laughs> and I know there are going to be plenty of thoughts on it. I also expect to get uh, a little bit of controversy and a little bit of hate mail over it, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. My skin is getting very thick. <laughs> All right, I hope you enjoy it. And here it is. And I'm really surprised. When I was out here a couple weeks ago, I started walking out this uh, mowed grass path in the turnaround, but uh, I didn't have a leash for Capone and it felt like I was just kind of going deeper into the woods and I didn't know what was out here. So I turned around and come to find out there is a memorial or a monument commemorating the Native Americans who once lived here. It's not even marked. I just got done editing the, the uh, Cumberland Gap Visitor Center Museum video. And in that, I put some facts about Native Americans history that weren't in the museum. And we all know, I mean, we all know how troubling the past is and, and <laughs> um, how history tends to whitewash that we basically stole the land i'm gonna say it <laughs> you know we stole the land and then to come to something like this you know it is here but it's not even marked but let's see what it is I remember, oh wow. <gasps> okay, so this commemorates, I guess, all the tribes that were here. I'm gonna take you around in a minute and show you what they all say. It's beautiful. Interesting, I just came from a Civil War, a, a little family graveyard with a Civil War soldier. And now we have this memorial, and a memorial to Okan... Jeez, Capone is full of energy. Ok uh, Okanastota, Oka Okanastota, great warrior of the Cherokees. Gosh, he lived to be 73. 1710 to 1783. Oh, look it. People have left stuff to him. Oh, I wish I had something to leave. 
Wow. All of these are facing him. Cherokees in the Little Tennessee Valley. Deer clan. Wild potato clan. I wonder if the size of the monument means anything. A relation to the size of the clan, maybe? Wolf clan? So in addition to Native Americans, there used to be wolves. <laughs> Paint clan. Bird clan. Long hair clan. And blue clan. This looks like some kind of a fire burning something, probably for some celebrations or rituals. I come to places like this and just feel the irony of so much of our civilization and what it is today, and especially me being someone who chose to drop out to a certain extent, who chose to leave the hustle and bustle of a very urban life. and get back to nature. That was really what my goal was and backpacking the John Muir Trail that, that really made me realize that I wanted to be close to nature and in talking to so many people and a lot of the reading and the research I do and realizing that more and more people are feeling the need to get away from civilization and get closer to nature. And uh, as I drive around and I look at civilization and I look at houses with perfectly landscaped and sculpted yards with fake deer in the front. <laughs> you know, places like Disneyland and office buildings and cities and, you know, even, even suburbia, we tear out all that is natural, we kill and chase off all the wildlife, and then we, we recreate it. We create these little safe parks and these pretty little lakes and, you know, we put big houses on these pretty man-made lakes. And in the meantime, we've wiped out everything that is natural and pure and real about our planet. And I just find that that's so ironic. And the other day, as I was driving through the country roads of Tennessee and I saw more fake deer on a lawn, I realized it hit me. There's been a you know, constantly throughout history, great philosophers and intellects have 
contemplated and studied the need for man to conquer everything, right? To conquer and control. And man versus nature is as old as man and nature itself, or as old as man itself, right? And standing here amid this memorial, realizing that white man conquered their nature, conquered them, forced them out, forced them away, stole their land, raped and pillaged their land, and built what we today call civilization so that they can then recreate a version of nature and their reality that we can control. And then when we build multi-million dollar houses on sea cliffs, and we build in hurricane and tornado zones, and then we're shocked at the devastation because we can't control mother nature. I feel a deep sadness standing here among this memorial to the people who were here once. Because you know what? They were right. In my humble opinion, they were right. Living close to the land, following the seasons, following the rhythms of the rising and the setting sun instead of the minutes and seconds on something on your wrist. Staring at Staring out at something as beautiful and peaceful and awe-inspiring as this, instead of staring at our cell phones, I have to wonder, what have we become? And I think the bigger question is, where are we going? Who are we going to become? i got to tell you, the last few months, that's been a really big, fat, scary question. What do you think? I don't know about what. How about Akanastota? What do you think he would think? You know that commercial when we were kids of the Native American standing over a bunch of litter with a tear running down his face? That image has been flashing through my head a lot lately. And I imagine him just kind of watching over all of us with a tear running down his face about what we in our society has become.